now we are live here on nerdstonemedia.com youtube periscope twitch all that stuff uh this is the pro wrestling rewind or the wrestling rewind number uh 24 so dave welcome to the show hope you're having a good week with all things considered oh it's a pleasure to be here there's i mean how could you not have a good week this was a historic moment for humanity to finally get a private rocket crew uh to the international space station i mean I, I hope everybody watched at least some of the videos from it, it it's one of those things that i think i'll remember my entire life it was super was cool when it happened yeah it was super cool. It was one of those things where uh, we could actually see it in Do in Ireland, which is cool. Um, right, yeah, because part of it was over the Irish coast. I remember them saying if they abort now, that's where they would crash. Yeah, they, they would have cra crashed somewhere out, out in uh, Galway. I was like Galway, so I was over the west coast, so it's pretty pretty crazy. But luckily it was all successful. And um, yeah, man, I, uh, I really enjoyed that because fair play to Elon Musk. He's managed to do what the government couldn't. This is why corporate interests and private businesses are important. To the yeah. free market. <laughs> the government yeah, won't help you. Values. Both certainly have values. I understand the arguments on both sides, but this can show you what truly happens when you have a private company that gets some seed money from a government project and what they can do with it with their imagination. Exactly. So it's pretty cool. You know, Elon Musk is going to take us to the stars. He's going to take us to Mars. And he'll be able to get off this horrible planet. So hopefully, <laughs> that is, yeah, get away from here. The amount of bad press that that guy has to deal with, oh, man. it's nice to see him have a moment like that. And it's not just a moment for him. Like Honestly, I didn't even feel like that watching. I just feel like this is a moment for us. For and us? not yeah. me because I live in America. Like Humanity. Human. Yeah, humanity. Right. Which is, you know, we kind of lose track of that. That we're all the same. We are all the same species and you know every our, i believe our destiny is not on earth it's in the stars so Absolutely. let's get there right you know that's right i mean you're either inner circle or you're elite you gotta exactly. choose exactly you know and, and it's that that's kind of how i see it so fair play to elon musk you know he did invent paypal which is how i buy everything so you know who says in what 20 20 30 years we're not all taking trips up to the moon or to mars or elsewhere right so that, that's something that could happen right it's, it's pretty cool as dystopian it's a reality system, now right it's yeah, a reality that exactly. we didn't think would happen in our lifetime we always I, thought we'd just be reading novels or watching space movies but never actually getting there well as dystopian as the world might seem it's cool like the thing about a dystopian future is yeah there's lots of really bad stuff but there's also a massive technological leap so we are living in a sci-fi novel or a book blade runners becoming a reality all we need now is like <laughs> it's very AI true um, I mean, you can deride 1984 all you want, but the tech that they invented to spy on people was pretty impressive. Right, on, which is nothing compared to the tech they have now, so that's even <laughs> you know, more crazy. But uh, w before we get into the wrestling, guys, if you like this kind of talk and want to get into proper conspiracies, check over From the Dark uh, on our YouTube channel and on Twitch, and you know the podcast is up. And we got into one of the most interesting theories ever, uh, <laughs> which we're going to do a part two of. Um, and it's it's all about you know Donald Trump and time travel and me magic, so uh, yeah that's not done yet, but um, that's a lot of fun. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, go over to There's No Media, There's No Media on YouTube and, and subscribe and you'll get you'll get the second part of that or even check out the first show, which I was quite happy with Dave. I thought time travel was a good topic to to, to go into. Yeah, it was really fascinating to go into. I don't mind using this time to cheap plug it at all because you guys really should check it out. And, you know, it, it's what we're learning is you can't take such a broad topic and try to distill it down to an hour. We're really finding some really great nuggets yeah. in all of this that we're going to explore more in depth in future episodes. But while we're taking this time, oh my God, listen, we're wearing a cowboy hat because Jim Ross is coming. Um, <laughs> it suits you. It suits you. Go for it. Yeah. I have AEW's preview for Double or Nothing playing find me but um and why you guys are taking this time you know click subscribe to our channel uh, hit the like button notifications all that good stuff but you know get us up there get us boosted so that you can support some small creators and see exactly. what else pops up in your algorithm and be sure to go to nerd to know media.com you can find all of our shows there all of our network shows there uh it's, it's really just fascinating time glad to be part of it 
so many shows are coming up now. Coming up now, like it's it's crazy. So I can't I can't even run down through them because we we won't talk about anything else. But just go over. Yeah. More has been joined every week. Um, there's a bunch of new content dropping. I've gone through the vault, Dave, actually of of the the desk, and I've started clipping bits from the old shows. So a topic of uh, that myself myself and yourself talked about about the importance of wrestling theme music went up there yesterday, and it's been a long time since that show aired. And it's cool to actually get it. That was 2017 or 2015. Oh, wow. A long time ago. A long time ago. So I'm going to have to give that a listen. I I encourage everybody else to because I'm curious. I I, I don't don't even want to spoil the things I say, but I'm I'm curious if I mention Zack Ryder and Maria. You do. That's how it's like. That's it. I'm a consistent fan. I am a consistent fan. I will give you that, guys. That's how it starts. I was like, oh, well, he brings up Maria. Actually, you said, I'm I'm annoyed because Maria doesn't have her team music or something like that. And I was like, this is brilliant. Um, But yeah, so look, (laughs) if anyone is is checking out the the channel, we have a section called From the Vault. And that's like where a lot of the older stuff's going to be clipped. Like, not full shows, but like bits and pieces from it. There's there's a good review of Pro Wrestling Secrets Revealed which I forgot we did, and that's up there, and there's a whole bunch of other things, so anything I find uh, on the off days of the network, I'm going to pop up some shows there, uh, some clips there, because they're about 15 minutes, they're nice little nuggets to listen to, so I'd encourage everybody to subscribe for those as well. But, Dave, last week we didn't do a show, because we took the time off, because you had Memorial Day, and I just didn't want to do a show. Um, so, <laughs> so we took the time off, and... Um, yeah, like uh, we were kind of, we we're gonna do a Kane special. So if anyone wants a Kane retrospective, let us know below because that would be cool. But we said we we would um would take the roll the dice on this one, I suppose, pun intended, for AEW's Double Nothing. I did a preview of the show on the channel, and I said to get around to a review. So here it is. Very well done, by the way, my dad. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and I'm glad that we put some time on this because um. I want. I didn't really know how I felt about the show until the second watch. Uh, I was, I was kind of a bit annoyed with some of it, but I overall enjoyed it. And then when I watched it again, I was happy to maybe have to take some notes and properly be able to, uh, to, to 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 get more unique takes on this rather than what I've seen around. Um, like I heard some people say, this review, this um main event is the best wrestling event of the year or of all time, and I have thoughts on that, but um. Yeah, where do you want to start on this, Dave? Do you want to start from the beginning, or do you want to just go with the main event and work down? Um, yeah, I mean, we can start, we can breeze through a couple of the beginning uh, things. I will say I will probably make more references to the comparisons between recent WWE pay-per-views I think than I normally fair. would yeah, I think when we go back and look at a show. Yeah. Because, you know, this is the Wrestling Rewind. We're not covering this the second it happened. We took no. time to really go through it. Um, I think we both have watched it twice based on what Derek is saying, at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I think this this was a show that usually I wouldn't watch something like this twice because it's it's very cut and dry. But because of the way this was shot, because it was something so different uh, based in the, the world that we're kind of in at the moment, um, they really did push some boats out here and the main event in, in particular. So it was a show that I felt needed to be watched twice. Yeah, because the first time I watched it, just like you, I went, I don't know if I liked that. Yeah. I was texting somebody, and they said, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm watching this wrestling show for my podcast, but I'm re- I really don't love it. Yeah. And so I had to think about why I didn't love it and give it another chance and see if those opinions changed or didn't. And let's find out whether or not they did. That's actually exactly how I felt. Because uh, Bryn texted me, he goes, oh, you need to watch the the stadium stampede match and i'm like okay so i watched it and then i was just like yeah um it was a thing that happened <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like what people are freaking out going oh it's better than the fireflies phone out match and it's better than the the the, 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 the bone yard match and I'm like it wasn't that's though. absurd yeah it wasn't though like it, it wasn't was, even better than money in the bank it wasn't but that's what i thought too uh it, it had moments uh, the second watch, I enjoyed it a little bit more because I was, you know, I, I knew what to expect. But my the overall salvo of this is that, like, the opening salvo of this is a lot of the bigger spots in this we had already kind of seen happen. Mm. So I'm like, 
there was nothing really new or surprising here. It was the the, the word the present overall presentation of it was a lot of fun. The you know the the cheerleaders and the, the overall dressing up of it and that, that was fun. But um, I think AEW went a bit too far with this as far as like they already blew their load leading up to it. So by the time it happened, it was like, oh okay, so you just done a little bit more on this rather than presenting something completely new. I think that's what WWE, the strength of the WWE cinematic matches were. Because we had no idea what they were. You know, every one that we've seen so far is different. And nothing in them was kind of set up previous. It was just like, okay, this is something completely different. Well, that was one of my issues. Um, And I so apologize to Nat and Mick. To Nat and Mick. Yeah, I don't even know their real names. To the Jack, to the Young Bucks. To Matt and Nick. Wow. Yeah, um, please come on the show for an interview, guys. I totally know how to pronounce your names. But, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, He'll get it for the interview, don't worry. <laughs> I would get it by then. But one of the things that bothered me is that backflip off of the goalpost should have been one of those OMG moments. Yeah, exactly. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't because no. they told us before the match they were going to do it. Mm. So I wasn't shocked or surprised. I was like, okay, now it's time for that spot. And that is a ridiculous spot. It was. And he was injured That's as well. I think I think uh, Matt Jackson was injured. Or Mac or, I, I, he, yeah, I, think I don't know if it was just storyline or not, but yeah. I mean, he had to be injured after that fall. I mean, that's that's insanity. That's a legitimate 20 feet to the ground. But see, this is the problem. This is the problem with this style of wrestling. You know, it's your spot, my spot. Your spot, my spot. Right. And, you know, by calling the spot like this and telegraphing it, you're like, oh, okay, so this is expected. Rather than, oh, my God, that's crazy. Uh, I don't know. It's throughout the whole match. I don't think they did enough to surprise me. And I don't think they did do, as you said, was expected. Uh, Okay, I guess we're starting with this match. We just... We, yeah, we're just organically going to, did it. We organically did it. So, on, but, so, so for but, anyone who didn't know, there was uh, the Inner Circle versus the Elite with Mahardi, who's not necessarily in the Elite just yet. And they were in a Sega Stampede match. In real life. Exactly. Uh, 30, <laughs> it was a 34 minute cinematic match that. Um, was, it, uh, was, it, was it cinematic? Yeah, well, that's what they said. That's what they said. That's the way they sold it. So it was one of the kind of thing, not in Daly's place. It was shot on location. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was a spectacle, you know, that's what they were kind of going for. But as uh, as we kind of alluded to a little bit, it was lesser of a spectacle than we were expecting. Anything that was there was too, too telegraphed. I, I did like the bar segment with uh, Hangman Page, I thought it was fun, and Jake Hager. So, are we going to fight yeah. or are we going to drink? And <laughs> that was fun. It's very APA. Um, very APA. Like, very APA. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, as the actual wrestling itself was pretty cool. Um, I, I love the Young Bucks, so their work was great. Omega, I thought, was kind of lost in the shuffle, to be honest with you. Like, being honest. Um, hmm. The same with Chris Jericho. I liked, but he did drink milk in the bar. I thought that was hysterical. It was funny. Uh, Jericho was kind of just there, but, you know, yeah. it was what it was. That um, ending, though, I mean, you could take Kenny Omega out of it all you want, but that ending was absolutely nuts. Yeah, yeah, like that was so that's, it. That's, you know, yeah. that's what he does. That I, 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 you know, even though this match kind of got a bit, it could have went, could have could have went for 20, 20 minutes, twenty five minutes, and it would have been fine. Yeah. They could have cut this down a bit. Um, but even though the match got lost in certain points, it kind of came back, and as you said, that ending was out of this world. The ending was out of this world. There, there were a couple of moments I really loved. The ending was one of them. Um, the other, surprisingly enough for me, not the biggest Matt Hardy fan in the world, but the pool dunking when he kept coming back out at yes. different versions of Matt Hardy. That was amazing. Uh, very akin to the Firefly Funhouse. Yes. I've seen it going through. I was like, that's a clever. I yeah. love the storytelling that they're doing because right here. Because the pool was from the Hardy compound. Right, it was from the Lake of Reincarnation yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we even got we got a V1 reference. <laughs> We got like uh, the team Can't extreme, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so good, and I love that. I thought it was fantastic. That was the like, Matt Fags popped up on the screen. I almost oh, died brilliant. <laughs> because he can hold his breath for uh, thirty seconds. It's brilliant. I'm three like, hundred and forty six seconds. I there, it was. There you go. Three hundred forty six <laughs> seconds. Um, and I, I, I thought it was that was my favorite moment of the entire match of the entire pay per view. Uh, was V one and last of us fun, you know. 
Um, but but see, my issue, well, my um, issue with that moment though, sure. is that it took so long that in my head, even as a wrestling fan who genuinely loves wrestling, hmm. I went, I'm suspending my disbelief. I'm I'm totally buying into this whole reincarnated as different characters, but what on earth has the rest of this match been doing for the past like six minutes? Right. Like that was the disconnect I felt. Like I didn't feel that in the in the way that Money in the Bank was presented or the Boneyard match. I felt like I they was... went and they focused on like a feud for five, ten minutes and then no, they back... came back to something else and it was like it was very the cuts were very jarring. I would it say didn't flow very well. I would say that for me would be similar to the way Oscar just was in the lift for like half an hour. On second watch, he's not in as long as you think. Oh, fair. But that's what it kind of felt like. I was like, why are you seeing the lift yeah. for like the whole match? What's going on? Exactly. Yeah, so it's just it's like... Exactly yeah. that feeling. I think that's just wrestling, right? That's just wrestling magic. Um, wrestling storytelling. But um, I, I don't know. Like what it, The thing about the Mahardy segment, and I'm glad you brought that up, why that worked so well was because we weren't expecting it. It was something that was completely right. different. And it, to be honest with you, it was probably the safest thing to do in the entire match. And it was the most fun thing because they didn't telegraph it. It came out of nowhere and it was just the weirdest thing of the whole night. You know, I loved it. It was great. You know, like, overall, this wouldn't rank what people are saying that's the best of the storytelling matches. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. No, and this to me almost uh, screamed of Vince saying, oh, I'm using my Titan Tower, look how big it is. And Tony Khan being like, I'm using my football stadium, look how big it is. And you all know what I'm insinuating. It was definitely a pissing contest between the two. It felt like to me. And I was like, guys, it's not about the fact that you're billionaires. It's about how can you create the best spectacle for each other. And I think the Boneyard match blew any of these out of the water. And that didn't require crazy huge sets. No, like I I personally, I I think the Fire, the Firefly from Hell match is the best one. Um, and I think that's fair. Just, I, that's just, what I love about wrestling. You can find something, you know, regardless. Like, just because just of how you, it was the most unique thing I've seen in about 25 years. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's crazy. Even, you know, longer maybe, probably ever. Um, but the, but it was like reliving our childhood yeah, within 20 minutes. Exactly, know? yeah. The yeah. bone ear match, as far as, like, a match, still the best match of, of this whole way of telling um wrestling stories but uh this look if you like if you liked it awesome i liked it too i'm not saying it's bad i just wish they were able to control itself sadly aj wasn't there though dave but i just think it's worth noting that he was involved in what's probably one of if not the second best match during this entire lockdown era even at his ripe old age of 77 (laughs) welcome how old he is but he's old he's not he's 47 40 48 He's not that old. No, I think he's like 43, isn't he? Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's, he's not that old. It's fine. Hey Siri, how old's AJ Styles? I know he's 5'10 and like 218 pounds. Yeah, I know that much. Um, but I don't know how old he is. I look a hell of a lot older though because of my beard. I haven't shaved. I'm going to shave my quarantine beard eventually, Dave. So we'll find out. <laughs> so I got distracted. My phone's sitting on the other side of my room and it started to respond. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what's going to do. You know, big text listening to you. That's why everybody <laughs> should use the Brave browser. And if you want to help out the show, you can by l- clicking the link below. The Brave Browser is awesome. has a built-in VPN, doesn't track you, and it's free. So go check it out in the link below and help support the podcast and the channel. Absolutely. Mo- and AJ Styles is moving from Raw to SmackDown? He is. Not only that, right? AJ is moving from Raw to SmackDown, but also um, the Ultimate Bro is moving to SmackDown from NXT. So that's pretty Never. cool. Uh, that's pretty cool Matt Riddle um, I love Matt Riddle and uh, that, that's a pretty cool move I think uh, after Raw this week we'll have some more things to talk about as far as current yeah. things um, but the big one yeah. is they're having a they're moving they're, they have a crowd again kind of and they're doing lots of trades because obviously if you fire half your roster you're going to have to uh, to fill those gaps um, have to. I, w- I would bring up just the scariness of my stats right now. Go for it. Uh, AJ is 42, so I was yeah. right, about 42, 43. They've changed this. I think he used to be listed. I'm 100% positive he used to be listed at 510. Somebody went in and changed Wikipedia. How dare you? Wow. Um, apparently, he's now billed as 511, but I nailed his weight, 218 pounds. I'm not a super fan. Let's go back to AEW. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, so AEW, um, I want to talk about the low point of the night for me, if that's okay. Actually, do you want I'm to get... see if yours is the same as mine, because mine was a production thing that made the whole night low. Okay. And I, I feel like you have a particular instance, so I'm going to hear what you have at first. Cody Rhodes. Yeah. I cannot stand Cody Rhodes. I like, don't like him. I don't like him. I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. I just don't see it. I. I. I tried, and it, this isn't a, a hate thing. I'm like, I just. I don't see the appeal of Cody Rhodes, at all. I. I think he's a great mid card guy. I. Th- I think you know dashing was awesome. Dashing Cody Rhodes is great. I like Stardust, but this whole match that he had with Lance Archer. By the way, two X W D B guys, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Um going for this for possibly the worst belt I've ever seen in my life now I know that was because it wasn't finished because of the pandemic but it looked like something you know like a, a template that you get in 2k in 2k games make belts you can design whatever you want you yeah. can design whatever you want that's what it looked like and I'm like oh my god that is the ugliest belt I've ever seen in my life um everything about this was just like this is bush league this is a man who has made a belt for himself and put on a pr- now the match was good i will say the match was very good but the whole time i'm like he's gonna win that and this is the whole reason for lance Archer coming in it felt lame it felt pride and it, it just felt kind of pointless you know it's like okay so cody you can't you can't win the world title but you won this and you could have put over darby allen i think darby allen would have been a much cooler pick for this I think that would have helped him a lot more than Cody walking around with the ugliest belt of all time. You know, like Darby Allen could have had a skateboard as a belt or something. I think that would have been cool. Oh, that'd be super cool, yeah. But it's like... Oh, that bump he took. You know, oh, man. a terrible ladder match, but the bump he took. I don't want to get away from this. We'll, we'll get to the ladder. We'll, we'll get to the, we, we, oh. will get, we will get to the ladder match. But um, what did you think about it? Am I wrong here? Am, am I missing something? Like if Because I know people love Cody, and I don't understand why. Like Someone just tell me what's good about Cody Rhodes. <sighs> I, I think it's a cold of personality type of thing. You know, right. it, Cody's the face of the rebel brand of wrestling, so you got to love him almost. And there were times where I thought they did stuff with Cody well for going back in time. Right. Um, I thought his NWA championship match was brilliant. It was a bit too old school storytelling for me. Yeah. Well, my issue was that seemed to then become the theme of Cody Rhodes matches. He didn't just have wrestling matches. <gasps> There always had to be some sort of hijinks going on, mm. uh, some sort of emotion on why this is so important for not just Cody, but the wrestling industry as a whole. And eventually, I think that just starts to wear on you because it's like, yes, your father was amazing. I'm really happy that you're getting these titles. Your match against uh, Dustin Rhodes was uh, it was great. So it was a true blood feud. I mean, the Hardys wish they could have a match against each other like that, yeah. and they didn't. I watched them. They're terrible. But <laughs> they're terrible. It's, yeah. They're terrible. I'm yeah. talking about the WWE ones. I mean, just oh, yeah. Do you remember really when like, Matt I like oh, they the, duct taped Jeff to a table and then jumped? Off. Anyway, oh, I remember. I remember. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. So like, I I I appreciated the story matches, but the issue was that's became all that Cody was and he kind of just became this repeating guy where that's the kind of match he had and then last night we saw him kind of in a normal match Matt Tyson was out there naturally mm. of course because you know we got to get that early WWE luster back so see that's something grab else grab the people they had at see, Wrestlemania that's, see that's something like, else like it's like we're going to bring in Mike Tyson I'm like okay right so our big play here because we hate the WWE so much is to just be the WWE that never right. works. That, and this is the thing, you know. People have said to me, "Oh, but, but they have money," and I'm like, "Yeah, TNA have money too." Oh, well, but they have this person. I'm like, TNA had those those two, and it's just like all I'm seeing here is what we've seen over and over again, a scam to pull over certain people, and I feel bad because there's guys who are genuinely loving this, and the product is the product is very good. But as soon as I start seeing this, I'm like. Danger, Will Robinson. I, yeah. I, have, I have seen this already like three or four times. And starts out great. It starts first out, couple years are fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. then, oh, this is just a promo vehicle for a couple guys. Yeah, exactly. I, know, I see what you're saying. I hope it doesn't go that way. So do I. I'm, I'm I really hope it doesn't. That it won't happen. 
Well, look, I was too once when Fair Play to Cody, he put in that rule where he couldn't go for the world title. Then he gives himself a title anyway, and you're like, really? Okay. Like, yeah, your just, first chance, first defense first ch- of it, you got it, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, come on, man, like, it, I, you know, I, I get the Dusty Rhodes thing, but when you think about the Rhodes family, there's gold dust, and then Uber mid Carter. It's like, who, you're, you're not the... I think he thinks he's a bigger star than he is in in real life. And well, he got I, over in Japan, and he thought that he was, you know, God's gift to wrestling. Yeah, I look. In. I I respect I I respect what he's done, you know, fair play to him. But I'm like, if I was running a wrestling company or whatever, based on what I've seen, like if I was, in, I would be putting other people first because at the end of the day, you need to build stars, and so far. And people might freak out in the comments. And look, do. Comment away. Um, I'll defend my opinion. Comment they, away. I'll comment they, right back. They haven't built anybody. Still. Like, everyone here are still ex-WWE guys. And that's kind of it. Like, okay. So, with this match, John Moxley, Brody Lee, more ex-WWE. The very same thing that these people with cut promos complaining and uh, railing WWE for. They just went and did it themselves. You know, it's it's yeah. it's unbelievable. It's like, stop doing exactly the same thing you're going to do. And this is like consistent AEW. This is what they do. Oh, well, I don't think that they were upset that WWE pushed or they pushed. I think they were upset because they didn't get pushed. And yeah, I, you know, I think that's fair. I think it's a combination of that, but I think there's also a huge combination of some of my favorite indie wrestlers over the past five years work for this company. Um, they are very, very heavily influenced by Pro Wrestling Gorilla, which is a indie. I mean, I guess they still exist, but all their talent works for AEW now. Exactly. But uh, yeah, they were uh, their promotion out of uh, California. Yeah. I mean, it got big enough, even though it was only like a 500 person venue, it got big enough that big names in wrestling would go and watch the shows. So Seth Rollins was backstage at a show one time, but then he started using moves he saw at the show in the next big review, just saying. Um, uh, Excalibur, who's the commentator, and it's my favorite commentator in all of AEW. Uh, mm. That's where he comes from. Um, you know, all these guys like MJF and uh, a lot of the lower guys that we really didn't get to see too much. Brian Cage yeah. uh, would be would be a great example of a guy who came from there. And I enjoyed watching those DVDs so much that that's what got me pumped for AEW and the, the WWE guys and the Japan guys, other than Omega, who, again, I, I grew up, around my age, I grew up going to watch him wrestle locally, so I have a connection there, but, I mean, that's... Cody was never the tune-in to AEW guy for me. It was, we have some fantastic talents. This guy has... It's like when a politician runs for office, right? you got to have a name brand uh, recognition. You're more likely to get noticed. It's mm. just the way popularity works. Yeah. And Cody has that. He has the lineage. He can bring in a ton of legends who will always support him because of their connection to his dad. So it's great like that. But now we've been here for a year. Yeah. Where? What are we going to see, company? Like, where are you going to go with this? Jericho is only getting older. I love the guy to death. Yeah. Don't take that in a bad way. I'm just saying we need to see what the next evolution of the company is going to be. I now, am I being unfair? Tell me if I'm being unfair. Well, I don't think you're we being have unfair. this pandemic going on. Look, I don't think you're is being Is it unfair. hard to grow during all this? Like, I do think they tell better stories than WWE does. Every match, at least, has a compelling storyline. Hmm. So I, I don't want people to think I'm being completely negative because I do have some faith in this company still. Yeah. I just feel like I'm watching the same movie for the third or fourth time. The product feels better. The product presentation is a lot better. Like they, They've nailed this empty arena thing. It feels more alive. Do you have my favorite commentary team? I love JR. Makes everything feel important. Oh, yeah. I love Tony Giovanni. You know, everyone knows that. I'm a huge Tony Giovanni mark. Like, it's ridiculous how much I love Tony Giovanni. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and I, it feels like WCW, right? Like, really good WCW. But that's the problem. And it's really WCW, w- too. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, that's the problem. It's WCW. Like, <laughs> and you haven't learned anything. They've just changed names around. So instead of having... Oh, but, but, but wait, Derek... They call themselves a new league. Coincidentally, when Vince McMahon launched a new football league, no yeah. connection. No connection. No connection. But like, it's it, it seems like oh, we're just gonna point score, and point scoring mm. is great. But then it doesn't lead you anywhere. Like the things we've learned from the Monday Night Wars is 
you focus on your own talent you build that up it's the same with anything if you're running anything don't don't look at what they're doing look at what you're doing and this is again what tna tna's huge problem all the viewers focusing on what WWE are doing and then it eventually just went off the rails you start making really bad decisions and my fear is we're get we're, we're like AEW are setting themselves up for this they're turning off people who are like wwe by doing silly things and not connecting and then in the long term you know instead of focusing on guys like mjf who to be honest with he's you amazing. he's amazing you know there you go there's your there's your mega heel right there he's fantastic yeah. um or even sean spears is pretty cool they're focusing on this elite inner circle thing way too much and it's it, i've seen this before um but i think they're controlling that but having cody come out at the same spot and just kill it like as soon as that match happened it just killed the pay-per-view for me i had to stop watching it and then i watched it the next day because i'm like i'm annoyed now this is just I, yeah this is just what's the point like what what is the point of having this having this match you know if you're just if you want a title just give yourself the title and be done with it um guys yeah, during that match i i got like honestly i'll just straight up say i got so bored yeah that it was very boring my phone to yeah. just check check a little bit on social media check some this wild news that's going on and by the time i looked back up it just felt like that tone had been set and it took me another it was three or four matches to get back into it. It wasn't really until the main event that I started caring again. I wouldn't mind. Um, the the women's match was quite cool. I really liked that. That was um that was a really good no DQ match. Statlander uh, or the the Nile Rose the Nile Rose match was quite good. Right. Um, Statlander was it was okay. Um, but you wanted to talk about like actually <laughs> it's funny right sorry but I I, I want to go. <laughs> With uh, Penelope Ford, I thought that was Emma. And I'm like, she really mm. looks like Emma. Because I was kind of like watching her back and forth. And I'm like, wait, no, it's obviously not. But she really looked like her with the glasses on. I was like, oh, that's heel Emma. <laughs> it was just... Yeah, let me cut to the really chase. Funny. She was very attractive, folks. She was extremely attractive. And it was very... very it was very... I, I think... Um, I was going to call her hot Emma. But um, <laughs> how dare Emma, you? Yeah, Emma got hot when she got. Her she did when she when, when she stole the the iPod. She was like, she's got the yeah, element of yeah, danger. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just like, oh, well, oh, Grand Theft Larson, you never heard right? anybody. It was so funny, but um, yeah, I thought that match was pretty fun, but very inconsequential. Very inconsequential. Yeah, I didn't even know what it was supposed to mean. It just uh, it was a it match. Was a match. By was, the way, can I call out? I'm I'm. I'm I'm just going to call this up. CBSSports.com. I don't know who you have recapping matches for you, but it's not acceptable to say, quickly cut him off with big moves. Oh. As, as former recapper. What a maneuver. What can a maneuver, you tell us yeah. what the moves are, were that happened? Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I know that type of writing. That's when you don't care about a match, and you're just like, oh, my God. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, quit or let somebody else better do your job. Just That's saying. fair. That's fair. Yep. You know, you, only the only one person can do that is Vince McMahon. What a maneuver! <laughs> what a man, what a maneuver! <sighs> what a maneuver! Um, <laughs> I just had to do that. Uh, oh, that's fair. That's fair. If you have sports, I'm sure it's just your writer. <laughs> um, okay, the casino ladder match that kind of opened up the show. Um, I didn't watch the I didn't watch the pre-show. Um, no. This was a 30 minute ladder match. You didn't watch the buy-in, man. No, I didn't watch the buy-in. Oh I, my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I started watching it, and I was just I, because I, I I did well. I watched about ten past the hour, so uh, no five past the hour, and the match was already well underway. It was interesting. Um, on rewatch, I enjoyed it a bit more. It was it was yeah, not the too. best. It was not the best match of the card. It was not the best ladder match I've ever seen. However, this was supposed to be like the so. Is this the SummerSlam or the WrestleMania? I think it's the SummerSlam, right? It's like. The second biggest I've been show. having troubles figuring this out because this was this one where they show last year. I remember because it was when Moxley debuted, yeah, and it was huge. Um, and Double or Nothing was essential. Was this their first second? Pay-per-view? Well, it was their second, but their first one happened at like a, a convention, yeah. That was an so experiment. There, but yeah, this was all, the first one officially under the AEW brand, right? Yeah, there was all in Double or Nothing, all in Double or Nothing. That's the way it kind of works, right? Right, right. 
So it's either SummerSlam or WrestleMania. I treated this like Mania when yeah, I watched same. it. That's, that's what I thought. I don't know that, if it was or not, but yeah. Yeah, that, that's how I was watching it too. And that's why like the actual card itself, as I said in my preview, you know, a, a WrestleMania needs a needs a ladder match. It needs that kind of big, that big spectacle. And I think for the most part, the match kind of delivered on that. But I, they could have went for something a bit better than the big chip. It really looked bad. Yeah. Um, now, did you have a problem? I'm going to ask you because I know my answer. Did you have a problem with the concept of this match? Uh, not necessarily. It was a very veiled money in the bank thing. But um, I didn't have a. I had a. I had a problem with the presentation. I thought the presentation okay. was very poor, and the way um, they would all come out at, at random times. It was, It felt very. Felt very TNA ish. It's like let's just yes, do it differently, it just to do it differently. And Here's I would, why I didn't have an issue though with it because yeah. if Urban Legends slash Wikipedia are to believe, Chris Jericho is the one who came up with the Money in the Bank concept. Yeah. So it would make sense that he would take his concept to a new promotion for sure to get a little bit i guess but um yeah i didn't i didn't like the countdowns coming in they made no sense to me tna did that stuff all the time with, they did uh, reverse battle the royals was, also. yeah what was that match they used to have where there were referee boxes on the King outside the, King of the Mountain. oh my lord I so i, I got I, vibes of that i like king of the mountain because i just kind of like king of the mountain at the end um but well, I liked King of the Mountain because I could see AJ Tope outside the ring and over a penalty box onto somebody during yes. his youth. That yeah. was nuts. <laughs> it was crazy. But the, the thing about King of the Mountain is like it was once a, it was once a week, not once a week, once a year. Good lord. <laughs> Good lord yeah. It was once a year, and it was at some anniversary, and it kind of had that marketing to it, right? But with this, it's like, is this going to be more often? It's just, just going to be for this specific Double or Nothing show. You know, it's like... It'll be for all casino theme pay-per-views. Yeah. Which you do a lot. I don't know. They do. They love their casino theme pay-per-views. That's one thing that's very annoying. It's like, guys, can you can you just not... Can you, can you pick another concept? Any concept. And go with it. Um, I, I, I will say... Um, I know it sounds like we're being all negative about no. this pay-per-view. We're not. No, we're not. Like, we both like definite parts of it it's just we're not doing our duty if we don't point out some things that we would like to see improved so we can just enjoy it even more i mean again like i said we actually enjoy wrestling so we yeah. want wrestling to succeed that's what that's our angle exactly if you pull that we're coming out with this and i, I gotta say brian cage i watched him a lot uh, especially in pwg uh, lucha underground you would know him from as well and the strength of that man is unbelievable oh, man. well see this is what's great about like about his debut it's a it's a gimmick which you can actually buy into and the people that were in the match not only were they good bumpers but they're small guys so mm-hmm. he was just killing them. Yeah. Like, absolutely just killing these guys and it looked like an absolute monster so they made the right decision and while the match wasn't amazing the overall characters inside it like they got over everyone like i think the strongest shown other than uh brian cage was orange cassidy who oh is, he, yeah his entrance was fun oh uh, but through the whole through the whole match the commentator the commentator team you know were getting over that he didn't know how to use a ladder so he's just like why can't he set up a ladder what's going on and it was like he got over so much in such subtle ways that yeah. it, was, it was brilliant like i think they have they have they have aw have the whole character thing nailed down very well do. yeah as you said every match tells a story every match kind of means something and every match has a reason for existing and that's one thing that I absolutely love about AEW. WWE can't do that. Like, there's no such thing as a squash match really in AEW. Um, but it's also you got to be careful with that. You know, like with the we talked about the Chris Sandlander penalty before match. That was a good match. You knew the characters, but the match kind of just was there. Yeah. So even when Brian you have, Cage, yeah, his his repertoire is so deep. Yes. He's got so many of those power moves that it's not going to be like you send Ryback out and he just does the same slam for six weeks in a row. But Brian Cage is also you know, a lot safer like, than Ryback. He actually is good. Well, yeah, talent, good yeah. hand. You know, Ryback knows just... how. And I thought commentary, like you said, sold him extremely well uh, for a debut. I don't really care that Taz was there at all. It did nothing for me. Taz, 
I don't like It was Pass. Samoa Joe all over again for me. It did have uh, real, real shades of TNA again. But the thing about it is, I think comment, the difference between TNA commentary when it's done badly and when it's done well um, is you had Jim Ross putting over this. Yeah. And Jim Ross was like, hey, Taz is a money man. He looks out for himself. And that kind of made it a bit more legitimate. But then it just was like, oh, this is a rip off of Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, again, AEW, what are you doing? Like, do you hate WWE or do you just want to be WWE? And that's my concern. I'm like, you can't, okay. you can't have your cake and eat it too. You gotta, you gotta either be different or be the same. Which is it? And I think, and I think you can thrive and be different. I really, oh yeah, I really like, think there's a market for that. That's why people are. That's why people love this product, and that's why people are so religiously wedded to it because they're like oh this isn't the wwe we hate the wwe and their hatred blinds them to the fact that AEW is just ripping off big chunks of the wwe which is why we're the only wrestling podcast that you know doesn't hate wrestling (laughs) (laughs) because we're just like this is just the way it is these are just 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 wrestling it's just Um, wrestling right Am I thankful that there was a show for me to watch during these chaotic times? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I have no regrets about watching it. Oh, I thought it was um, great. No. Like, um, oh, Darby well, Allen also shined in this match. But you mentioned Jim Ross uh, yeah. on commentary. And, you know, one of the things I love about AEW is how much more uncensored of a JR that we get. Because sometimes he tells great stories, mm. and sometimes he makes really salty comments that I don't think are <laughs> supposed is, to make air. <laughs> he is so... He, you can tell who he does not like. And he's just like, there you go. It's, it's great. Like As I said, the commentary team, it feels like a real a real team. Yeah. With real, car- with real people talking about it, you know, which is... Which is what you want. Like, it's funny, because uh, Excalibur, the guy in the mask that looks ridiculous, is, like, the most level-headed of the whole lot of them. Which is just the best thing about it. It's like, what? It's great. It's crazy. Um, there was look, one line that Ross well, said, and I, I think somebody got uh, suplexed into a ladder and bounced right back up to basically set up to get hit with another suplex or a hit or something. Yeah. And Ross's commentary on it was something, I'm paraphrasing, but something along the lines of, X gets suplexed into the ladder, but gets right back up to his feet. And under his breath, he goes, of course he does. <laughs> <Sorry to die. laughs> just calling it out for the fact that he didn't sell but like, see, that's, that's salty jr i love it see that's great like i think that's what makes it again like go back to tna 2004 2005 you'd get yeah. similar stuff from um from the professor from don west mm. it was a similar kind of presentation it was this kind of fun uncensored wild wild west kind of stuff but with jim ross there you have the pedigree of it as well but also He's, he's allowed be himself and make these really insightful, funny remarks. Like, at no point am I sitting there bored listening to the show. No, no, he's or, very entertaining. Or what I, even if the match isn't good, the commentary is, compared to when I watch WWE. And I'll be honest, a lot of the time I have to turn off the commentary because it's so terrible. I just I watch it without commentary because it's so, so bad. Um, but that's one thing that this company has going for. Like, it has a lot of really, really good good things like I personally as someone who lives halfway around the world on a different time zone than, than you guys um, I love that's on a Saturday night because it means oh yes, yes it nice means job. I can watch it and not be a zombie the next day and work <laughs> you know I think it's great it's not like what one in the morning on Saturday I'm like this is fantastic it's why watching UFC shows are great too um, yep. and it's something that I'm really if they change it I would be like absolutely just relentless on Twitter Saying, please change it. But I think Tony Khan knows this. And this is one thing about Tony Khan. This is the great about having someone who has an English mindset running in a wrestling company in America. He knows that what it's like to be a wrestling fan over here. Where you, from the age of seven or eight, when you realize that the shows are on at a certain time and you're cognizant of that, you're like, my life is going to be watching these shows at one in the morning on a Sunday. So he's like, hey, let's make it, let's change it up a bit and do it on a Saturday. So... I'm thankful for Tony Khan for that. It's one thing that TNA never did, which is shocking because I remember saying that to Dixie Carter at one point and being like, hey, would you not think of doing shows on a Saturday? Obviously, that didn't go anywhere. But um, 
it is what it is, right? Like, thankfully someone did it. So fair play AEW for that. Tony Khan, thank you for hitting that block. Saturday night could be a wrestling night. And it should be. It makes all the sense in the world. Sunday night really doesn't when you think about it. No, well, I think it's, you know, you've got the tradition just because of WWE. It. But other That's than it. that, I mean, Saturday night's perfect. You don't conflict with, uh, like, football season. You don't nope. have that issue. Nope. Um yeah, you conflict with UFC, but quite frankly, I think if somebody was going to make a choice between UFC and WWE, or wrestling rather, I think that choice has already been made, even if you're a fan of both. But, but Dave, you UFC, know which one you'd rather buy. But UFC, to be honest with you, taking out the prelims, unless you're sitting there yeah. watching the prelims, which most people don't even watch. You um, can tune in after a pay-per-view. Exactly, yeah. and that's what it is. Like, what, when McGregor would fight, he would fight at like half four or five in the morning. So yeah. it's just like... I'm sorry, no wrestling show is going to come up to five in the morning. It's just not going to happen. So I, I, I think they've not, they've... not that WrestleMania is two parts now. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that's, yeah, to make me eat my own words there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's one of the, it's one of the greatest gifts that AEW has given this new presentation style and this new um, this new way of presenting pay per views. And this is what I mean. If the like if if AEW came out and we're like we're going to do shows on a Sunday night. That would be ridiculous. And it's like you're just copying. Doing stuff a little bit differently. Knowing that you're not WWE. And trying to, to do all these unique things that WWE just don't do. I think that's the strongest point way forward for AEW. The strongest point that they have right now as it is. And I wish that's Absolutely. what they do. You and don't have to be more thing. violent. No. You don't have to be more violent to be no. different. No. And I think we're starting to learn that. Exactly. Like, like, choose. like they, look, they, the match with Mox and uh, Omega. While it was a fun match, it went way over the top. Uh, it was not a fun match to to watch. Uh, I mean, I didn't think it went far enough. What do you mean? I mean, I, they could have been more hardcore with it. Oh, they could have been, but I mean, for like a for a mainstream wrestling promotion in twenty twenty. You know, it's like I'm you know, just saying that's nothing, Barry. That's <laughs> yeah, uh, nothing. The, the, uh, for context, this is coming from the guy who loves death matches. So what, you want them to break out sheets of glass and so throw them through the glass and power bomb them? I mean, yeah, unless I see at, least, at least 200 light tubes out of fluorescent getting broke over somebody's <laughs> face and they inhale the toxic fumes to the fact and the, and the that the referee and... in the middle of the ring starts to vomit because the fumes are too great, but yeah. he's surrounded by barbed wire that has been wrapped around the roof so he can't escape. True story, I was there for that match. You see, that's... <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's just crazy. I swear to God, when when I do go over to New Jersey, Dave, you're taking me to a death match. I don't care. We're yeah. going. We're going. You have to. I have to, I have, spring I have to see it. I have to see There's it. One like every. Oh my gosh. I have to see it's... it because that's just wild. Um, and yeah. it's better in person than in video because you don't have to watch extreme close-ups. <laughs> you can just take a seat and go. Ooh, I don't know how if I can handle this at the moment. <laughs> oh, that's uh, hilarious. But yeah, look. Just, it's, I think I had one more thing before we close out. That's sure. Because cool. um, we talked a lot about production, and I thought they did a great job overall. Yeah. However, my biggest issue with the pay-per-view also was the production. I, okay. and this is going to sound so ridiculous, uh, I absolutely hated that there was crowd noise. I hated it. I now, when it was in up. the building, yeah. I was like, okay. But it was the things that they were chanting, if these are wrestlers and crew, who were surrounding the ring for the most part, which is what they showed, why would they be chanting Mark chants? It didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I was like, are they piping things in? But then you would see they were chanting. So clearly they were, I'm sorry, I hate to like shatter the illusion for a second here, guys, but clearly they were following a script of cheer this at this point in the match, mm. cheer this phrase at this point in the match. And I, 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 it was okay when they were in the building, but when they went out to a football stadium that holds 80,000 people or whatever, you really want me to believe that the 10 people who were standing around chanting with the cheerleaders are going to be heard when they're up in the upper decks going through like reincarnations and water. It just, I know you can't do the soundtrack because WWE beat you to it. And I know you can't do the, those atmospheric effects and whatever, but I don't, I don't know if pumping in fan noise or however they did it. it, it I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It took, it took me out of it. I, I understand why he did it, and it was basically to be different to WWE. That's what it screamed of. It screamed of, gonna... we're doing this to be different, not we're doing this because it makes our product better and makes us seem different. I, it's better than... Uh, look, to put, it, to put it into perspective, 
I was watching WrestleMania this year with my parents. Um, <laughs> and uh, when the women's matches were on, it was like, you know what it was like. Uh, you know what it sounded like. And your dad just, comes into the room and he's very curious. And he was like, yeah, he's like, what's going on? You're like, what's going on? <laughs> and it was just awkward. I'm sitting there going, this is the most awkward thing in the world. So, <laughs> so you're like, what do you do? You know, I, I think some piped in noise wasn't a bad idea. But they definitely should have done something different. More like the soundtrack thing for the the football stadium. Because that just made more sense. But look, right. I th- again, like it's a, it's a learning curve. It's a learning experience for them all. This is still a weird, very weird time to be arrested. Very weird time to be alive. To be honest with you, 2020 is getting more and more strange as we're, as we're going on. But, it's not going to get any better this summer. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, that's and that's why I say, like, that, that's my biggest complaint about it is their choice of how they produce certain set. But overall, like, I enjoyed the product. I mean, if we're talking strictly about the movies and the matches and all that kind of stuff, they were spectacularly well done. In front of a huge live crowd, I bet they would be going ape crazy over it. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So, you know, there's, there's so much impressive stuff to talk about. And if you watch any match from this, aside from the stadium show, um, the stadium stampede, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, I would actually say watch MJF versus Jungle Boy. It's yeah. a fun match. It's a, it's not too long. And you can see some really, really clever and creative moves. And if you're like me and you love flips, all the better. Exactly. You know, um, this this was a card. It was a Tale of Two Cities card. Had some really good stuff. Didn't have some. Yeah, you know, I thought the Moxley Brody Lee match was very, very disappointing. Um, very disappointing. But um, you know, it, it's it, this was a very story driven show. Um, we'll get more answers as we're going on, and obviously, you know, it, there was a lot to break down. But you know, the for the first big pay per view of the year, the WrestleMania, the SummerSlam, it was a solid B plus show. But that was about it. Um, anyone who says anything more than that, I respect your opinion, but I disagree. Um, and I would say. <laughs> You just, you just, you're, 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 I will listen to your argument, but my mind is made up, made good up. sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, particularly with this stadium stampede, I'm like, look, it was good, but you didn't hit the mark. You did, you didn't, you didn't knock it out of the park. To, you know, for me, that was already done. And you were going against, you know, already the WWE has this, this pretty much locked down. So keep going you know keep trying new things i'm not going to beat up on this i'm not going to say i hate the show like because here's the thing you know we wanted this we wanted this kind of change yeah. and this is the future of wrestling this the cinematic um different way of presentation so hey let's see where it goes let's just you know call it the good call it the bad but i i, I give all the credit in the world to aw for trying this not something i thought i'd see but um, I didn't hate it. It's just it wasn't as good as WWE. So let's see what else they do. Yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I'm excited for what the future brings. I'm certainly going to watch the next show. I look oh, forward sure. to it. Oh, yeah. uh, this is not Disney coming in and retconning Star Wars and ruining both of my childhood. <laughs> ruining so, everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ruining everything. Like, ruining everything, as, yeah, as, so. as Disney does. Yes. As they do. Oh, and by the way, quick update, uh, fans following the conspiracy. WWE has not been sold yet. Just the Derek wrong ticker that we're going to start putting in the top of the screen. Hey, screen. look. I want you guys to uh, Look, I'll, I just reported it. That was it. You know, what Dutch Mantel said. I didn't say it was going to happen. Uh-huh. I wouldn't be uh-huh. surprised. I would not be uh, surprised. He's sticking to, to it. He's sticking to it. Of course it. I'm going to stick to it. Dude, aliens could drop from the sky, man. 2012 is weird. 2020 is weird. <laughs> so, it just is what it is. I'm just going to make sure I get a counter going just for next week, just for you guys who are watching on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, once again, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, follow us on all of our social media. You can find links to all that at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Definitely. Uh, Dave, before we get out of there, um, again, just going to back up on what you're plugging. Uh, nerdtoknowmedia.com is where you can find all of our shows. Check out From the Dark, a conspiracy podcast. Um, a lot of really fun stuff there. Aliens, time travel, all that good stuff as well. Nerd to Know Media is uh, pumps out a show every single day. If you've never checked out the channel before, thank you for checking us out. And for everyone listening on Phoenix FM, thank you for joining us. We will talk to you next week here on the Wrestling Rewind. See you guys.